So you're thinking of selling your house? I know it can be a very, very stressful time. As a realtor, I've helped literally hundreds of people sell their home and move on to the next one. So today I'm gonna go over the top 10 things that I have seen sellers make so that you can be on the lookout for them and avoid those mistakes. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Steve. I'm a team lead for the Three Rivers Real Estate Team right out of the Twin Cities of Minnesota. We have literally helped hundreds of people move into their next home, and we make content for people just like you looking to make a move. So today we're gonna go over the top 10 things I've seen people make, the top 10 mistakes I've seen people make when selling their home so you can avoid them. And we're gonna get into it right now. Without a doubt, the most common mistake I see sellers making when they get ready to sell their home is overpricing their home. Now, price is such a big piece of getting your home sold. It's one of the biggest marketing pieces you're gonna have. When people are searching for homes, they often do it by price because they're looking within a certain price range within a certain area. Now, if you're overpriced, you might not even pop into certain people's search criteria. They might not even know you're on the market. Now, I know everybody wants to make the most money when they're selling their home, but you need to be realistic with where your price is at. If you overprice it, you're gonna spend a lot of time on market and people are gonna forget about your home. Even if your home is perfect for someone, if they think it's overpriced when they first tour it and they leave your house thinking, oh, it's overpriced, I don't wanna pay that, it's really hard to get that person to come back and consider your home, even if you do price drops later. We're just psychologically not built that way. Once we've discarded a listing or discarded a home from our search, it's really hard to get someone back in there. So start with your pricing right from the beginning. You'll get more offers, you'll sell faster, and you'll have a much smoother transition. All right, the next biggest thing I consistently see from sellers making mistakes is they fail to take care of repairs. There, there's a lot of deferred maintenance on the property. Maybe there's bad carpet, bad paint, something like that. And they just say, hey, no worries, I'll factored into the price. The carpet's bad, we'll just knock two grand off the list price. Well, there's a couple things wrong with this. First and foremost, buyers don't wanna deal with these problems either. If you don't wanna deal with it, somebody else isn't gonna to wanna to deal with it either. Secondly, you're probably gonna end up double discounting the problem. So let's say it is carpet and you wanna do $2,000 off your list price for new carpet. Well, when somebody comes in and they tour your house, they're probably gonna go, oh, this is a great house, it's priced right, but it needs new carpet. Let's come in you know, four grand less than list price because it needs new carpet. Well, you already discounted 2K, now they're gonna discount another 4K because buyers always overestimate how much repairs they're gonna be. Before you know it, you've discounted your home $6,000 when you easily could have just taken care of the carpet to begin with. And this is all over the house, whether it's fascia, paint, cabinets, any of that stuff, if you don't wanna deal with it, person buying your home isn't gonna to wanna to deal with it either, and it's also not gonna show very, very well. If you take care of it right away, it's gonna show better, you're not gonna to have to haggle over it, you're not gonna to have to deal with it, and you're probably gonna sell quicker and get much stronger offers. When selling your home, it's really easy to let your emotions get the best of you, but you have to do your best to keep your emotions in check in this process. I know selling your home, you've lived there for a long time, you have a lot of memories there, and it's really easy just to let your emotions overcome everything, but you can't do that. This is a transaction after all, we're exchanging money, this is business involved right here. So do your best to keep your emotions under check. Check. Don't get insulted if somebody says something needs to get changed or buy an offer that comes in the door. I've seen a lot of bad offers, a lot of low offers get negotiated back up to a spot where both parties can be really, really happy about it. So there's a good chance the buyer is going to have a lot of emotions. You're going to have a lot of emotions. Do your best to check keep everything in check, you're gonna have a much smoother transaction if you can just remember that this, again, is a business transaction. We're transacting money between two parties and it's a house at the end of the day. I know there's a lot of emotion, a lot of memories there for you, but you gotta try to keep it all in check if you want a nice, smooth transaction. Sticking around emotions right now, it's important to get another set of eyes on your property before you go live. I always recommend bringing a professional stager through your property just to help rearrange things, to help your property show in its best light. There's a lot of different theories behind staging, but I've seen firsthand the effect that it can have, not only from your listing photos, but just helping show off space in better light. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go out and get the house completely staged, 
A lot of times you can already use the decor that's already within your home, but rearranging it in an area that helps areas show better, flow better, and, and photograph better can really help you with your home when it comes time to sell. Don't just slap it on the market with where things are at. Everything should have a purpose. Every room should have a purpose. And getting another set of eyes in there, like I said, a professional stager or maybe your realtor really sitting down and making sure that everything looks on point when you get ready to do your photos and your showings can really cut your time on market down. Also when considering staging and appearance of your home, don't forget to look on the out side at your curb appeal. As your prospective buyers are pulling up, your curb appeal and how it looks from the road is one of their first impressions of their home and one of the first chances we have to get them to fall in love with your house. So make sure your home looks great from the outside so when they walk on the inside, they continue to love what they're seeing. You also need to make sure your home is available for showings. I know this can be difficult. We all have a lot of things going on in our lives, especially if we're working from home. You might be working from home for eight hours and you gotta take kids out to activities and you gotta get kids ready for bed. It might be very hard to allow prospective buyers into your house, but the harder you make it for someone to schedule a tour at your home, the less likely you are to get buyers in your house. If they can't schedule it on a certain day at a certain time, by the time they can get in there, there's an opportunity that they might've bought something else already. Now they're not interested in your home anymore. So I always like listing homes close to the weekend, typically on a Friday, a lot of times I tell my sellers, hey, if you're able to get out of town for the weekend, go spend time with mom and dad, go hang out with an aunt or an uncle, go up to the cabin if you have one, get out for the weekend, allow us to get some open houses in, make sure that anybody who wants to see your house when it hurts first gets on the market has the opportunity to. Also, when you're getting ready to sell, you need to consider what your next move is gonna be. Are you gonna buy another house? Are you trading up? Are you trading down? Are you gonna rent? What does that stuff look like? You need to have a good game plan, have a good understanding of where you wanna go next. If you're thinking of buying, make sure that you're getting pre-approved so you know how much you need to clear. And if you can buy being non-contingent on your home closing. A lot of times if you're selling a home to buy another home, you need the home that you're in to be under contract so you can use those funds to buy your next house. So make sure you're considering all of that before you get your home on the market and you have a good understanding of where the market is as far as timing goes. If you're looking to move into something else, you have a lease starting or something like that, Make sure you're giving yourself adequate time to get your house sold so you're not paying for your old house and paying for your new lease at the same time, burning through money really, really real quick. So whether that's getting pre-approved, looking at leases, whatever it happens to be, make sure you have a crystal clear understanding of where you're moving and the costs associated doing that as well as the timing associated doing that. Now, when you're getting ready to sell, don't forget to look at your competition. You gotta know what you're up against within your marketplace. I see this all the time. Price, sellers have a price they need or a price they really want and they get fixated on that. And then their neighbor's gonna list their house for maybe 15 grand less, 20 grand less, and they're identical houses. Well, what's going to happen is maybe your neighbor is under listing on purpose, but everyone's gonna look at that house, maybe bid on that one, they might forget about where your house is. Vice versa, maybe you're gonna come in, come in a little less than where the competition is at just to get your house to move a little quicker. But you need to pay attention to what's for sale around your home and be ready to pivot and move if something pops up on the market that you weren't expecting. Now, one of the biggest mistakes you can make when selling a home is not spending enough time on your disclosure statement. When you sell your house, you need to disclose all the material facts that you know about your house. If there's something wrong, you need to disclose that. A lot of sellers are moving really, really quick and don't spend time on their disclosure document. And this can cost you a lot of money down the road. If you had a plumbing repair, let's say you took care of it, but you didn't disclose that it happened, and let's say it wasn't done very well. The fact that you didn't disclose that means you could be liable for the repairs that could be coming from that, even though you did everything that you thought was right to do to get that done fixed. So you gotta make sure you're taking ample time to get your disclosures taken care of. If you're working with a realtor, make sure you're sitting down with them and going through that and understand all the things that need to go into disclosure. Which leads me right into our last tip is you should be working with a realtor. I see so many times people try to do this on their own and there are so many different things that can happen when selling your house. There's different local legislations as what needs to go. There's disclosure docs that need to happen. You gotta market it, you gotta have it available. 
you gotta have all the paperwork in and ready to go. And if you have kids or you're busy and you have a job, selling a home is a full-time job. Don't try to do it all on your own. It's very hard to get the word out about it if you're not connected into the right marketing areas. So again, I can't stress it enough. Work with a professional realtor in your area uh, they can help you out with what needs to get done. They're going to help with market it, and they're going to take a lot of things off your plate and help you get a nice, smooth transaction so you can focus on the important things of life, spending time with your friends, families, working, and getting ready to make your move. Moving alone is such a time-consuming process. Don't try to add more by making sure paperwork and stuff is getting done on the sale of your home. Get someone involved that can help you with that. All right, there you have it. Those are my top 10 things. What do you think? If you have sold a house before, what things did you run into that I didn't go over today? Drop them in the comments below if I missed anything. If you have other questions about selling your home, specifically here in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, feel free to reach out. Call, text, or email. Our contact information is below. Happy to answer any of your questions. Till next time.